Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series and is intended to aid the Dreamcast and gaming community. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and if you're watching this the day it came out, it is September 9th, 2016. Do you know what that is? You should, the title says it. It is the 17th birthday of the Sega Dreamcast. My favorite video game console of all time. I absolutely love it. And if you somehow don't know that I love the console, well, welcome. You must be new. But, uh, yeah, I do uh, videos on the Dreamcast a lot. I've been covering it really since uh, I started on YouTube. And every year I acknowledge its birthday, which I know is... That's like a super nerdy thing to do, but come on, who the fuck do you think I am if not for a super nerd, let's be honest. So, yes, we're going to talk a little bit about the Sega Dreamcast uh, over the course of the last year. I thought that might be kind of cool. Basically talk about some of the, the games that came out, or well, all of the games that came out for it, etc., etc. Uh, before we do that, though, I do want to acknowledge that uh, there's a package here you might have seen. And that is very Dreamcast relevant, and we will be talking about that as well. But, um, yeah, before that... Let's talk about the elephant in the room, and I don't mean me, thank you fat jokes. Uh, no, I mean uh, birthday situation specifically. Now, the North American launch was on September 9th, 1999, uh, and that is obviously the date that we are currently celebrating here. Uh, the dates in Europe were a little bit later, Australia I knew it was later, I don't remember exactly, and of course a lot of people always like to point out, no, 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 the birthday is November 27th, 1998, because that's when it launched in Japan. Absolutely correct. But I'm not Japanese, uh, nor do people tend to really retain the Western or the uh, Eastern date, meaning uh, Japan. Uh, so yes, even though it did come out there earlier, and yes, technically that is accurate. Honestly, in the West, more of us just tend to think of the North American launch, and it's not because I am an American. It's just because I think it was just the marketing, man. Nine nine ninety nine. It's just such a memorable thing. That's why I think most people colloquially, socially, etc., think of today as the Dreamcast birthday. Uh, so, happy birthday, Sega Dreamcast. Let's talk about what happened to you over the course of the last year. So, the Dreamcast got five. Five new titles. Which I know to anyone who's like, dude, I have a PS4, five new titles come out every week. Yeah, no shit, it's a relevant console. The Sega Dreamcast is 17 years old. <laughs> Almost 18 again if we think about the Japanese birthday. But the fact that it got anything at all is amazing. Uh, but to get five is quite impressive. Usually we're lucky if we get one, maybe two in a year. Um, now, it must be, of course, said that these games are not made by Sega. Uh, Sega has not published a single Dreamcast title since 2007, the last one being a game called Karos, which they just, you know, published. They didn't make that game. The last game they developed was Puyo Puyo Fever in 2004 in Japan only. Um, but yeah, so all of these games were made by independent developers and independent publishers. Uh, basically what that means is they did it without Sega's permission, uh, but that uh, Sega honestly doesn't give a shit. Now, these weren't games made on like a computer and then a guy burned it on a CD and then put it in and called it a new game. No, no, no. These were developed and then they were basically sent to factories where they're pressed on nice machines and then they have cases that are, have like nice artwork and everything and then they're sealed up in cellophane and they are sold. That is the criteria for what makes an independent game. Now, every single one of these I've done a video on already, so I'm just going to kind of, you know, glance, we'll just kind of glance at them, I'll talk about them for a moment, and if you have any more, you know, if you have a curious on any one of them specifically, I'll have like up in the right corner here, or left corner, depending on what ends up looking the best in post, I will put a link there and you can check out the video on that. Um, I've also done a video earlier this year on why I thought the Dreamcast scene was kind of exploding, and I know going from two games to five is not exactly an explosion, but there's something going on. There's more Dreamcast games being released now than there used to be, and that seems illogical, on, at least on the surface. Uh, but I, again, did a whole video on that, check that out, I'm not going to bother bringing that up here. But, so yeah, let's start off with the very first game that came out within the last year, the last year being defined as the time between September 9th, 2015 and September 9th, 2016. The first game up was Ghost Blade. Uh, you know, Ghost Blade is a shoot 'em up or shmup. Uh, basically, the type of gameplay is you play as a little ship and you know you shoot at shit. Um, honestly, with the Dreamcast Independent scene, that's a stereotype that every single one of these games is a shoot 'em up because that's usually true. The incredible irony is this was the only one that came out this year for the Dreamcast, and it's a really good one. I, I had a lot of fun playing it. It's by Hughcast. Uh, they're based in Germany, and uh, they've they've uh, made a lot of games for the Dreamcast. Although this was their only release this year. Uh, but uh, hopefully they have more more coming. But uh, yeah, I really like Ghost Blade. Um, so moving on, this one was unique because 
Well, with the Dreamcast independent scene, you have to understand that uh, when a game is announced, uh, there's kind of a development phase, and then there's a pre-order phase, and then there's development update phase, and then three years later, literally, it shows up at your door. I mean, that shit takes a long time, because it's basically dudes making this stuff in their copious free time. They're not making a living off it, it's not their primary job in most cases, to produce the game, the one game, and uh, so as a result, it kind of comes out when it's ready to come out. Fruity, which is this game, was a very weird exception, because it just showed up. All of a sudden, it was in people's feeds, like, there's a new Dreamcast game, straight out of Austria. Uh, it's a puzzle game, too, which is even odder. Now, you have to understand, the Dreamcast doesn't really get puzzle games anymore. Uh, the last one that came out for it, at least to my immediate recollection, was Wind & Water Puzzle Battles. And that was a long time ago. That was like 2007, 2008, something like that, by Red Spot Games and Yuan Works, which was the developer. That was the only puzzle game that came out for the independent scene until Fruity suddenly showed up. Uh, now, Fruity is a pretty cool game. It's a very simplistic and basic game. Again, did video on it. Uh, but uh, it was a very welcome addition because it, it was so it suddenly just appeared. It was also a nice variety thing to not have another shmup. And on top of that, it was super cheap. Like, even shipped out of Austria, even to the US, it was only like 10 bucks. It was really odd. But uh, definitely cool to have that. And uh, this one, definitely the most blockbuster release of the year, Pure Solar. Now, Pure Solar, uh, a lot of people know because this game, for the Dreamcast anyway, was in development for years. Because again, they wanted to fine tune the shit out of it and make sure it was absolutely flawless. There are no patches, there are no updates for the Dreamcast. I mean, I guess there technically could be, but fuck that. Get it right the first time. So uh, they took forever to make sure this thing was flawless. Uh, or essentially flawless. I'm sure no game is truly flawless, but you get my point. Um, the other thing about it was that it, t you know, it did the most insane job with its uh, artwork. Like you look at it, and it's almost indistinguishable from a, a legitimate North American release. On top of that, they made a Japanese version and a European version that look, frankly, flawless. Like they would fit right in with your original collection, which was no doubt their intention. It's very, very cool. They put a lot of effort into that. Uh, if you've seen my video on this originally, uh, the collector's edition of this thing is insane. It had all sorts of awesome stuff. I've also done a separate video on the European and the Japanese versions. All three are exactly the same. Uh, from a technical standpoint, it's the exact same disc, basically. It's all aesthetics. It just looks different. Every single one of the discs is region-free, and they're all in English. But uh, yeah, very, very cool. Um, this game is an RPG, and it was originally released, I believe, in 2009 or 2011, something like that, for the Sega Genesis. Um, so for this, they completely remastered it in high definition with newer textures and everything for the Dreamcast and uh, more modern platforms. I believe it was also digitally released on like uh, the Wii U, the Xbox One, PS4, PC, etc. Uh, but yeah, there was a Dreamcast version. It came out this year, and it's really cool. Very welcome edition, because even in the... Um, the heyday of the Dreamcast, they really didn't get that many RPGs, and I believe this is the one and only RPG in the independent scene. On top of that, I believe it's also an American title, because it was made by Watermelon, and I'm pretty sure they're based in the U.S., I think Iowa specifically, so uh, very, very cool to have that. Um, next up, Leona's Tricky Adventures. The uh, thing about this game was that it was a puzzle game that uh, originally went to Kickstarter, and did not succeed. I was one of the people who backed it, but it ultimately didn't happen, uh, at least not through Kickstarter. They announced they were going to end up doing the game anyway, uh, and they made it. It came from Spain, and uh, it's a cool game. It's basically a puzzle game with uh, RPG elements, which was very interesting, because we had just had like the first puzzle game on the Dreamcast in years, and then we had the first RPG game in the independent scene completely, and then all of a sudden we had this puzzle game with RPG elements. It was just Weird. It was nice. We were getting some variety. It was really cool. Um, yeah, I don't know how well it ultimately did, but I recommend it to a lot of people. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, but yeah, the only real complaint I have about it is the spine is green, and it just looks kind of weird with all the other stuff. But uh, aside from that, very cool, very awesome release. And the final release we had this year, I uh, did a video on not too long ago, at the time I do this video, uh, the Orion Puzzle Collection. Now, Orion is a developer based in France, so yes, again, this is another game that came out of Europe, 
And uh, Orion, I know, is a dude who actually watches his channel. Uh, and this copy was originally signed. He signed the cellophane and everything, but I kept, uh, I couldn't keep that part all together because I wanted to open it. But uh, I kept the cellophane part, put it inside the case, so I still have the autograph and stuff. Uh, this is a collection that he did completely on his own. It consists of three games, Yopaz Ice Stare, Yopaz 3D, and Turtle Chomp. He basically took those three games that he made and put them all into a single Dreamcast compilation. Um, this was also another one that kind of like Fruity really just appeared. It had no real press or anything. Uh, there wasn't much build up to it. It just kind of was available suddenly. Uh, so definitely cool to have that. Uh, but yeah, so in the end, we had one shmup, three puzzle games when we hadn't had a puzzle game in years, and then our, our first RPG on the console. Five games in the year, which was kind of amazing because again, usually it's like one or two titles. Um, so that's, that's a cool uh, year for the Dreamcast now, but it, however, it is not over. Thanks to this. This comes from a place called The Bit Station. It's a website. I'll put a link in the description to the website. And I, I want to give a huge shout out to them because uh, when I, I, I knew I was going to make a birthday video for the Dreamcast, and they were all too willing to help me do that. So they sent this to me, full disclosure, they sent this to me absolutely for free, really just to help me with this video. They were totally at like 100% on board. They thought this was awesome. So I really want to thank them for that. And again, I hope you'll check out their website just as a courtesy to, to me and to them for wanting to contribute to this. But let's open it up so I can show you exactly what it is and why you might find it kind of neat. Uh, let's see here. Hopefully I can get into this with relative ease. I need to, um, at some point, you guys have to finally convince me to get like appropriate package cutting material. Because I like to rush into this stuff, as you guys know, and then a lot of people like, you know, get upset with me in the comments. <laughs> They're like, you're going to cut yourself! Or maybe some people want me to cut myself, and that's why they watch, hoping there's a little bit of blood situation. Who knows? But anyway, got the package open here. Past the bubble wrap. We have things once I get... Okay, need the scissors again. See, I was smart enough to have the scissors out this time. There's been many times where I like have the scissors there, I never use them, or I need them and I don't, I don't have them. All right, take them out. We have three games. What we have is Fast Striker, Last Hope, Pink Bullets, and Gun Lord. Now, if those names sound familiar, there is a reason these games already exist. Fast Striker, this is the original release. I did a video on this back when it came out. Uh, Last Hope Pink Bullets, which is a really cool shmup, as is Fast Striker, and Gun Lord, which again, I also did a video on back when it came out. This is a cool run and gun game. Um, I, I, it'd be unfair to compare it to Metal Slug, but that's the closest thing I can think of at the moment. Uh, Mark from Classic Game Room actually made this his 2011 Game of the Year, so it's a pretty sweet game. Point is, all three of these games were made by Neo Geo Dev Team, and all three of them are pretty good, and all three of them have shot up a lot in price. Um, so I bought all of them when they came out, so it's whatever to me, but like I know over the years they've gone up in value. Uh, so Neo Geo Dev Team wanted to help people out, so they did re-releases, hence this. And again, thank you to BitStation for providing these for the purposes of, well, really celebrating this uh, the birthday. Um, now, uh, every single one of these Again, come out of Germany. See, you notice that. These were from Germany. This one was from Germany. This is from Austria. This is from Spain. This is from France. Pure Solar being the freak exception where it actually is out of the States, because that's very rare. Most independent games that come out for the Dreamcast come out of Europe. Almost all of them. Uh, with the exception of Pure Solar and the stuff that Goat Store Publishing did, uh, which I believe they're based in Wisconsin, um, all of them come out of Europe. The only other exception I can think of was Dream Para Para, which came out of Hong Kong, but that barely counts. Um, but yeah, so the Bit Station has decided to help all of us out. Because I know over the years, having a unique perspective on this, because I, I make Dreamcast videos a lot, and people, I, I'm one of the few people that ever covers the Dreamcast independent releases. I know a lot of people in the comments, particularly my fellow Americans and Canadians, uh, want the games, but they really don't want to have to buy them from Europe. Enter Bit Station. See, BitStation is now going to start selling more uh, independent Dreamcast games. They also sell uh, NES, like, I believe, NES and SNES reproductions and stuff. Obviously, I know more about their Dreamcast inventory because that's, you know, it's kind of a thing. But, um, yeah, so they're actually the only company in the United States, in North America in general, that is selling the re-releases of these three games. So you can get them there now, shipped from the States. I know, of all the games on this table, I know they have Fruity. I know you can buy it there. It's like five bucks. Um, they have a lot of the Goat Store ones. They also have Wind and Water Puzzle Battles, that other puzzle game I was talking about. Uh, that's really cool. You should check that out. Um, 
my point is, if you want to get kind of nostalgic and you want to celebrate the Dreamcast this year, and you're in North America, you might have a better opportunity than ever to actually do that. And on top of that, again, I worked out a little deal with them for your benefit. Uh, I got you guys a coupon code. I'm going to put it right here on the screen. Use that, you'll get 10% off of your order. On top of that, if you spend over $100, you get an additional $5 off. They have flat rate shipping for, that's basically five bucks. So when, if you really think about it, you're basically getting free shipping if you spend over a hundred. Um, so if you were to get all three of these, there you go. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend these games, honestly. I think they're really cool. As I mentioned though, I did a video on Fast Striker. I did a video on Gunlord. I did a video on each one of these things. The only game on this table I never did a video on was Last Hope Pink Bullets. Uh, and the only reason for that is this game predates when I made YouTube videos. So I thought the best thing I could possibly do at the end of this video is we're going to pop in Last Hope Pink Bullets and just try it out and have some fun on the Dreamcast birthday. All right, we're rolling here with uh, Last Hope Pink Bullets by Neo Geo Dev Team. Obviously, we just said that a moment ago. Um, so this is an interesting game that uh, originally came out, in, despite what you're seeing there on screen, this game actually came out in 2006 originally. Uh, it was just called Last Hope. It was released by Red Spot Games. Um, there was a regular edition, there was a limited edition, uh, and the, the limited edition ended up being one of the hardest games to get, um, which is funny because I have that version. I got that by accident. I ordered the regular edition and they just sent me that. Uh, so that was nice because I had no idea years later it was going to be worth so much. But um, so in 2009 though, they re-released it as Last Hope Pink Bullets, which was like that DVD case version you saw. And basically they made a, a major change to the game because a lot of people had uh, thought the game was too difficult. So they toned down the uh, difficulty, but as kind of a consequence, they made the bullets pink to, to separate it uh, or to make it seem like, uh, frankly, you were kind of a wuss if you, if you needed to do that. And uh, I have to admit, I'm a wuss. I'm not good at shmups, as you will see when you watch me play this. I love shmups. I'm just not talented at them. I, I, I'm just not good at them. I wish I was. Um, also, another interesting thing about this release is, again, it's Neo Geo Dev Team, so, you know, big surprise, they intended it for the Neo Geo AES. Um, but they also released this on the Neo Geo CD, and I'm not 100% sure of this, but I think it was the first and might still be the only independently published Neo Geo CD game. Uh, and fun fact, the Neo Geo CD game, uh, with that version will work on the Dreamcast with like the uh, Neo Geo CD emulator. There's no point in doing that, of course, but it is, it is kind of funny that that option does exist to you. Uh, so I'll give you guys some uh, technical information, because I know a lot of people uh, always ask about this. Uh, there's always people in the comments who need this information. Uh, with Dreamcast independent games, they are all region free. Uh, so, you know, d it doesn't matter that this game was made in Germany, if you're an American, it'll work on your console, it'll work on a Japanese console, it'll work on a European console, it will work with, you know, the, the major accessories like, you know, the VMU, it'll save, you know, it'll do all those things. Uh, it's made with the mil CD exploit in mind, so it's not gonna hurt your laser or anything. Um, yeah, so I mean, from a very technical standpoint, it'll operate just like any Dreamcast game should. Uh, it uh, supports VGA, in fact that's how it was captured here, that's why the, the quality of the video is so good. Um, the Dreamcast outputs a really very clean, clear picture via VGA. Uh, it's hard to capture, but uh, I, you know, I spent a lot of effort making sure I could actually do that, so that's why you guys get to see that from time to time whenever I do videos on it. Uh, and yes, I know the graphics aren't that good, what are you saying? Graphics, resolution, image clarity, three completely different things. Don't be that guy who thinks they're the same, that's, that's not cool. Um, but yeah, this game, if you're interested, uh, you can again, you can check it out at uh, the Bit, uh, Bit Station. Uh, link is in the description. I want to thank them again for providing these for the purposes of the video because Dreamcast birthday it was really cool that they were all on board with that. I hope you guys will support them. I hope you guys do something cool for the Dreamcast birthday. Please let me know in the description if you did anything at all. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, happy 17th birthday, Sega Dreamcast.